Shalom Tanah, Tana Yisrael, and greetings. We want to deal with some uh, topical subject matters. One of them is uh, concerning Abraham, and it's concerning uh, being Jewish or being a Jew. So let's call this <coughs> um, Abraham was not a so-called Jew. Okay? Abraham, Father Abraham, was not a so-called Jew. This is very, very important to understand. This word here, Jew. This word here, Jew, there's a lot of connotations about who's a Jew and what's a Jew, and most of them most of these modern day connotations are false and are absolutely not true. Not true in the context or the sense of the scriptures or the Holy Bible. Abraham was not a Jew. But not only Abraham was not a Jew, but his son Isaac, Yishak, Yishak was not a Jew either. So let's just say this. Isaac was not a so-called Jew either. Isaac was not a Jew. So Abraham was not a Jew, and Isaac was not a Jew. Well, um, who was born next, afterwards? It was uh, Jacob and Esau. You understand? Jacob and Esau, the... The twins. We have Jacob, and let's just put, for the sake of the record, let's put Esau, Esau, Jacob, and Esau. Abraham was not a Jew, Isaac was not a Jew, and Jacob and Esau were not Jews either. But today we hear many people say that Abraham was a Jew. You probably might read it and hear folks say Abraham was a Jew. And there's nothing more ridiculous than to assert or allege that Abraham was a Jew. Abraham was not a Jew. What is a Jew? Well, according to what they tell us and what the Bible even says, the word Jew comes from Judah. Jew comes from Judah, the first part of Judah, or you, or ye. Some have it as ye, but then we have actually in ancient Egypt there were the you or the ayus. Now in the Mark we say, in the Ethiopics we say ayu, but that's now coming out of the true root of this idea of Jew. Now, the true Jew was an ethnic group in ancient Egypt. And this ethnic group in ancient Egypt were considered Egyptians. They were not native Egyptians, but they were descendant, one part were descendant from Abraham, the Hebrew. Abraham was a Hebrew. Abraham was not a so-called Jew. Isaac was not a so-called Jew. Jacob was not a Jew. They tell us that Jew is an abbreviation of Judah. But then what does Jew in this context, if we say that this Jew is from Judah, then what does this Jew actually mean in relativity to Judah? Now, in Hebrew, we are told and we find that Judah is considered, according to some, Yahuda. 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 Now, we're not going to get into the, the Hebraic etymology right at this. We're going to keep it, try to keep it simple, try to keep it direct, and keep it to some of the basics. But from Yehuda, or contracted Yahu. Yahoo contracted is either you, you understand, or yo, 
if you understand the etymology, Yehu, 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 you, Yehu, you. So we have you. Now, there's a big debate among people on, on Hebrew, and people are confusing two types of Hebrew, the original biblical Hebrew that is out of Africa, uh, Afro-Asiatic Shemitic language or black language, the original, and modern Hebrew that they call forced Hebrew, which is basically an invention of a northern converted people who seem to have Khazarian or Edomite or Esau's re relation. So this other Jew comes from Esau. But Abraham was not a Jew. Isaac was not a Jew. Jacob was not a Jew. And most of all, Moses was not a Jew either. Can you believe this? Moses was not a Jew. So we can even add right here Moses. Moses was not a Jew. Abraham was not a Jew. In fact, before Jacob's fourth son named Judah, there was nothing or no one who was known as a Jew in the context that modern-day Judaism and Jewish European Jews basically ascribe it to. So if we ignore the Egyptian, the Kamite, the black, the African, the Ethiopic connection, then there was no such thing as a Jew before Jacob's fourth son named Judah. So before Jacob had his fourth son named Judah, so of course his father could not be what his grandson, his son and his father's grandson was, or his great-grandfather and the great-grandson. You understand? So that, that makes no sense right there. But what does Yahoo mean? Yahoo. Because Judah has a meaning, or Yahuda, or some say Yehuda. You understand? Judah means the praises of God. Judah. Yah, Yehoda. Yehoda. Yahoda. The praises of Yah. So we have a two part word right here. We have Yah. And then we have, which means he who is, Yahu, a contraction of Yahweh, means he who is. He who is. He who is. Praise. Huda. Hoda. He who is. And the he is often ascribed to, of course, the Almighty, because when we read within Torah and we read within uh, Genesis, we find that Judah's mother, Leah, basically said, and let's get the scripture right here so we can go to the evidence now. So now we learn that Abraham was not a Jew. So therefore, Judaism could not begin with Abraham because Abraham was not a Jew if we ascribe it to the genealogy in the Bible and to what they say that the name Jew comes from Judah. You understand? And Judah was the fourth son of Jacob. And Jacob was the son of Yishak or Isaac. And Yishak or Isaac was the son of Abraham. And Abraham was not a Jew. He was not a Jew in the modern context of Judaism. Now, it's important to understand that at the, at, the very, at the very outset. But let's go to when Judah was born. Let's find out what was said upon the birth of, of, of Judah. So we have to find the area of Scripture where Judah was born and where his mother, what his mother um, Leah what his mother Leah said upon the birth, upon the birth of Jacob's fourth son. So here we go to, um, let's go to uh, uh, Genesis, 
Genesis and let's go to Genesis chapter 29 chapter 29 and um, verse 35 verse 35 so Genesis chapter 29 verse 35 and it reads and she speaking of Leah she conceived again she got pregnant she conceived again and beer, and she brought forth a son, a man child. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord, now will I praise Yahweh. Therefore, she called his name Judah or Yehuda or Yehuda, and left bearing. So when we look in the margin, in the margin note next to the name Judah, and we're using the Schofield Study Bible, we look in the marginal notes, and in the margin it says, i.e. praise. But really it means the praise of Yah. And another reference material, let's, let's get this reference material as well. Take notes on this, because this is very, very important. The name Jew has a significance, has, has a real significance even in ancient Egypt. It was a particular um, religious group, you understand, a particular denomination, we can say, of Egyptians who worshipped the very same God of Abraham, but they worshipped this God of Abraham before Abraham, and they were known as Hebrae. Hebrews, and you probably understand what Hebrew means, because Hebrew was what Abraham was called by the Philistines. By, by the Philistines, they some say it was the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians, when he was crossing over the Phoenicians, the story goes, the Phoenicians saw Abraham crossing a, a river, and they named him, or they called him, Abram the or the Hebrew. Now some interpret that Hebrew and therefore in that context was because he was crossing a river. Now it, it, it seems to be true to some people because they don't only really think about it very, very very long or very hard. If you, if you think about it for a moment, every time somebody crosses this river are they called a Hebrew? Or they had already heard of Abraham they recognized Abraham, and it was Abraham was recognizable, you understand, to belong to this particular spiritual group, you understand, of true God, of the true God worshipers that were known in ancient Egypt to be the Hebrews, and also an ethnic group of people known as the Ayus, as the Ayus because of their religious denomination to Ayu or you or yo or eo or yahoo, ayu, ayu, and this is where we get in the, we get this in the Ethiopic. We get, uh, let's see if we can write it right here. We get the Ethiopic, ayu, 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 and if you do the etymology on it and you contract that right there, you have the ayu. The Ayu. Ayu was the name of their God, you understand? Know and the people, as a religious denomination in Egypt, since they did not worship the other gods of the Egyptians or the other denominations that were in Egypt at that time, they were known as the people of Ayu, just like a Christian. The Christians were known as those who were devoted to Christ. So even though Christ himself was a Ayu, you understand, or a Yehuda, a Judahite. His followers were called Nazarenes because he was known as the Nazarene. That we have people later on, Gentiles predominantly, who were worshiping Apollo, Diana, and the different Greco Roman gods. They would say, well, this group does not worship the Greco Roman gods, the, the, the Eurocentric gods, but they worship this Afro-Asiatic, this African religion, you understand, and it's devoted to Christ, is their God or is their prophet or is their holy one, 
is the one who is all important in their religious philosophy, so we will call them Christianoi. We will call them Christianoi. You understand? Those who are devoted to Christ. And such was the same even in ancient Egypt. You understand? So when we say that Abraham was not a Jew, the only way you can call Abraham a Jew, according to the Ayu or the Ayus, those who worship Yahweh even before Abraham. Abraham was not the first worshiper of, of Yahweh. You understand? He was not. The, he did not even know, according to Moses. This is that 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 the Almighty did not reveal Himself by His name Yod Hey Wow Hey to Abraham. He did not reveal Himself as Ehya Shara Ehya, I am who I am. So Abraham did not know Yahweh. He is who He is. You understand? But he knew of El Shaddai. You understand? He still knew of the true God, but not by this particular name. Not by this particular name. And this is the mystery of what we have in, in uh, Exodus. But if you go and you look into Exodus, where Moses, who is the author of these first five books of the core curriculum, Moses is the author or the authority it is, it is very important to um, pay attention when, it, when, when he says that he was not known, he was not known by this name. He was not known by this name to Abraham. He was not known by this name to Abraham. Now here we have uh, Exodus 3 where it speaks of the revelation of the name of Yahweh. But the revelation to who? Who was this a revelation to? It was a revelation to Moses, to, to, to Musa. This is where now Musa is beginning to become learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. Not the Egyptians, but the Egypts. That verse in 722 of Acts must be properly interpreted and rendered, not that he was learned in the wisdom of the Egyptians, but in the proper translation, according to the Emperor's Amharic Bible and proper translation, he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. You understand? Of the Egypt, of the Lower Egypt, you understand? The, the Coptos Egypt, as well as the Upper Egypt, the Ethiopia or the Ethiopia Egypt, or, or Upper Egypt. Egypt, where the Kui land, the God land, the ancestor land, the holy land, he became learned in that wisdom, and we have that just the chapter before, where Moses, he takes on um, uh, Zipporah, Zipporah, the Ethiopian, as his wife, and his father-in-law, who was the high priest of, uh, of, of Median at that particular time. And, and that's a whole very important and a very um, interesting, uh, uh, very interesting story right there. But um, as we as we go forward, as we go forward here, it says, and Moses said to Elohim, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? You notice how today everyone says like, yeah, there's only, well, we all believe in the same God, and they never name his name. You notice that? You know, people always say that they assume that anyone who believes in the God is, is believing and worshiping the same God because they say there's only one God. And that's not true. There are many gods. There are many lords. The Bible even tells us this. But for us, for us, in and through the Moshiach, Yeshua, you know, saying the Jesus Christos, there is only one true God. There's only one true God. There's only one God for us. You understand? But we can't just use generic titles like God and Lord because that's a title. That's not a name. So it's very important the, what's being said right here. 
when Moses said to Elohim, to the Elohim who revealed himself in the burning bush, Behold, look and see, when I come to the children of Israel, I shall say to them, The God of your ancestors, of your fathers, hath sent me to you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? So he recognized this is the Elohim, Ha Elohim, the true Elohim. But what is your name? Because he knows that in Egypt at this time, there are many attributes that have become separate gods. In other words, God, they, they ran an autopsy on God, basically. And the attributes of God, you understand, became, um, became idolized in different um, anthropomorphic forms, you understand, fragmenting, you understand, the true God, the one God, into many parts and, and pieces. The God of the river, the God of the land, is the two different gods. But originally, these all were attributes of the true God, you understand, of Yah, of, of Eo, of Yah, of you, of the Ayus. Now, M Moses asks this question. Here, Moses asks this question. He says, he says uh, what shall I say to them? And Elohim, in 314, said to, to Moshe, I am that I am. He said, Ehyeh shara Ehyeh. He did not say Yahweh. He said, he said it in the first person. I am who I am. I am that which I am. Ehyeh shara Ehyeh. Ehyeh shara Ehyeh. Ehyeh shara Ehyeh. I am that which I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, the Bani Yisrael, I am the Ehye, the Ehye hath sent me to you. So, of course, Moses would not go to the people and basically proclaim that he is the Ehye, you understand? But he would say in the third person sense, he who is, and still saying, Ehye have sent me, because the people could have interpreted that, well, you have sent yourself to us, so, you know, what big deal is there in that? You understand? So Moses, when communicating to the people, the I am that I am, did not, did not deify himself. Instead, he, he spoke in the third person. He is who he is. So this is very important, and, and Elohim said moreover to Moses, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, that Yahweh, the Elohim of your ancestors, of your fathers, the Elohe of Abraham, the Elohe of Yishak, the Elohe of Yaakov, have sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial. This is my remembrance. My remembrance to all, to all generations. Now, it's very, very important that we understand this at the outset. It, it, it's tremendously important that we understand this at the outset. Because if we do not understand this at the outset, a lot of confusion, you understand, comes into the picture where people say that, for example, Abraham was a Jew. He was not a Jew in the biblical sense of a Jew, you understand, from his great-great-grandson, who was not even born at that time. So when people try to make it seem as though Yahweh was not known before Abraham. What about, what about Adam? What about Noah? What about the patriarchs? What about, you know, you know I mean, I mean, you can't really even, even, even say that. Now, there's another part that I want to share, I want to share with you. You understand, when we go to the next chapter, the next chapter, now, the next chapter, which is chapter 6 of Exodus, the answer now of, it says Jehovah, which is the anglicized, Germanic, anglicized 
um, version, or some may say perversion, of the name yod hey wow hey or Yahweh, the answer of Yahweh to Musa's first prayer. Then Yahweh said to Musa or Moshe, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, to the, to the great house of Egypt. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his out of his 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 land. Now it's interesting what Yahweh is saying right here, and this is all part of the true Jew, the true etymology of this word, both in the Bible, Yovasan, and then going before the Bible to the source of the wisdom of the Egypts in which Moses was initiated into so that he could rise to the consciousness to be able, you understand, to communicate and receive Yahweh and receive his message. You understand, because he had to be on a certain consciousness level. You understand, he had to be on a certain consciousness level, just like he had to be out there in the wilderness. He had to separate from his old life. In other words, he had those prerequisites that he had to meet to be worthy you understand, to be called and to be chosen as this, as this deliverer and as this lawgiver for Israel. And most of all, as a preserver of the true worship of the true God that was known in Egypt. The true God was known in Egypt, but the true God, after time, and, and we see this in history, we see this in cultures, how cultures... Um, degenerate, you understand, how they fall off, you understand, they might be spiritual, you understand, at an earlier time, but become more materialistic, or other peoples and other cultures come in and compromises are made, you understand, and therefore religion, and while spirituality becomes religion, you understand, and then religion becomes big, big, big business, you understand? And even though people may have the Bible or the Scripture, they don't study it, they don't teach it, and therefore they cannot even live it since they do not even know it. Now, when we get to this point right here in the first verse of chapter 6, what is very interesting, and I already have a lot of information here. I hope everyone's able to take this, this basic information down um, for this uh, short lecture right here. What Yahweh says now to Moses, he says... Um, you're going to see what I'm going to do to Pharaoh, to the, to the Pharaoh, um, the Pyro, the Pero, the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, the great house. You understand? Um, for with a strong hand, he says, shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of the land. Is this some word that he is emphasizing? He's emphasizing something. He says, with a strong hand. Now, when we look at the ideal or the ideograph, you understand, we have a letter something like this, if you can see this. Something like a circle, you understand, on a stick. A circle on a stick. Now, in the Ethiopic, we have the letter like this, you understand? or even like this over here, if you can see it. So we have this and this, right? The old way, this is the old way, and this, in a sense, is similar to the, the, the more modern um, Ethiopic. I'm going to clear this in a moment, so take this down right here. The point of this is, is that the symbol, the ideograph, the ancient Ethiopic ideograph, you understand, or we can say hieroglyph for 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 Yah was the right hand, was the right hand. So this symbol right here, the right hand, is similar to the Black Power, the fist that was used in the Black Power movement. If you recall, remember the fist that was used in the Black Power movement. They used the fist. So the the fist, the right hand fist, according to the ancient languages and preserved even in the Ethiopic and in the Amharic was the right hand for the, the sil syllable, you understand, or the fidel Yah, as in Yahuda, as in Yahu, or Eo, or Yahweh, as in also Yaakob, you understand, 
was the right hand fist symbol. So when we look at the language, the Ethiopic language preserves it, and to uh, uh, a lesser extent, you understand, the latter, the latter day Hebrew also preserves it, the square form of the Hebrew. But the square form, the modern square form of the Hebrew was not the original form, but that's, a, that's another discussion right there. So this would symbolize that strong hand. This would symbolize the right hand, the right hand um, symbol, which is Yeh, Yu, Yi, Ya, at the fourth. Yeh, Yu, Yi, Ya, and, and it's the right hand. It's, it's, the, 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 it's called the Yemen. It's called Yemen, it's similar to the place in Arabia um, across from um, modern Ethiopia or Eritrea, the Horn of Africa is called Yemen. And Yemen means the right hand. And we know that Bain, Yemen, Bain Yemen, or Benjamin means Bain means son of the right hand. So it's interesting when we're in Exodus right here, chapter 6, verse 1, that Yahweh would say to um, Moses, he would say, you're going to see, now, now, now shall you, thou see what I will do to Peron, Peron, for with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand, so it's almost like a double ya, you understand? Ya, ya. You understand? With a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And Ha Elohim spake to Musa and said to him, I am Yahweh, or it says Lord here in, the, in King James, but I am Yahweh. And I appeared to Abraham, notice, I appeared to Abraham, who was not a so-called Jew, you understand? And it says to, to Isaac, Yishak, you understand, who was not a so-called Jew, you understand? And to Yaakov, or Jacob, you understand, who was not a so-called Jew, you understand? By, it says, it says, by the name or the Shem, by the Shem or the Shem of God Almighty, of El Shaddai. But by my name, Yahweh, or Jehovah here in the King James Bible, it says, was I not known to them? Was I not known to them? And now here is what is very Here's what is very interesting, that he says that he appeared to Abraham. He appeared to Isaac or Yishak. He appeared to Yaakov. And notice something right there. He didn't say anything about Esau. He didn't appear to Esau. You understand? He didn't appear to Esau. This is where the other, this is where the other Jew or the European Jew comes from. You understand? And we as the true black Jews or the Judahites, you understand, comes from Jacob, Isaac, Abraham. You understand? Whom Yahweh appeared, but not by the name of Jehovah. So many people have wrestled over why was this so significant? Why was it so significant in the sense to point this out right here? You understand? Why were these things significant? As we start to understand that Yahweh is the true God of the Hebrews, we can see the connection. We can see the connection in the fact that Abraham is, 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 is a worshiper of El Shaddai, who is also known as Jehovah. Notice what he says. He says he didn't appear by, by his name Jehovah. But his name, Jehovah, or Yahweh, was always his name. He didn't just change his name. But now he's revealing himself by this particular name. Because among the Ayus, the ethnic so-called Jews, or the Ayus, a religious group, an ethnic group, and a religious denomination of ancient Egypt, he was known amongst them. And in the highlands of Ethiopia, he was known amongst them as the true God, or in the Ethiopic as Egezi Abihir, as Egezi Abihir or Kahai Lekulu. Anyway, now, it is interesting if you go through this, 
you will find where it says where it says the God of the Hebrews. He's called Yahweh is called the God of the Hebrews. And Abraham, you understand, is the first within the Bible record, you understand, that was written by Moses, who was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. He is the first to be called in the Bible, not the first to be, but the first to be called in this testimony and record a Hebrew. So Abraham was a Hebrew. Yitzhak was a Hebrew. Yaakov was a Hebrew. Now here's what's very interesting. Now, if you just look at it from the so-called um, worldly or fleshy perspective, if you do like a lot of people do, being unspiritual, you will say that Esau was a Hebrew. So if you just look at the fact that, that Abraham, if you think Abraham being a Hebrew was his race, See, some people think it was his race. You understand? It was his spirituality, not his race. You understand? If it was his race, then this means Esau also was a Hebrew. But what race was Abraham? Abraham was a black or Ethiopic Assyrian. This is what, this is what Abraham was. He was a, a black Assyrian. A black Assyrian. You understand? Or an, an Ethiopic Assyrian. This is very, very clear. You understand? So his, his son Isaac, also a black Assyrian. You understand? Or Osirian. We can call him an old siren, too, if we understand um, what, what the true Assyria really is, is pointing to. Jacob, too, was a black Assyria, and Esau also would also be descended from this very same black or Ethiopic Assyrian. You understand? But as far as being a Hebrew... We understand very carefully, and, and notice this in the Bible. This is why the Bible, especially here in Exodus and elsewhere, it goes through painstaking um, um, details to distinguish the children of Israel, you understand? The God of the Hebrews, the mixed multitude that came out. You understand? There's, there's a distinction that there are different groups. There's, there's, there's a fine-tuning of detail. And what we hear nowadays is people saying Abraham was a Jew. That's a lie. That contradicts the Bible. Abraham could not be descendant from his own sons, sons, son, or his own great-great-grandson. He could not be uh, this, he, he, he was already he was already ascended. He already he already died by that time. So how could he be what his great grandson was? He was a Hebrew. He was not a Jew. And you will notice that certain converts, Khazars, some relation they have to to Esau, seem to like to pervert the word of God in order to bolster their own um, claims. You know what I'm saying? They would like to say that Abraham was a Jew because they call themselves Jew. They like to say Isaac was a Jew because they call themselves Jew. They like to say that Jacob was a Jew because they call themselves Jew. So how come in this sense Esau wasn't a Jew? Esau wasn't a Jew, but Esau now is a Jew, and this is the connection of, of so-called Jew to Esau. You understand? But a distinction to the true identity of Abraham as a Hebrew and the true Jews, the Ayus, you understand, or the Ayhud, which was an ethnic and a religious group. You understand? They were ethnically related to the Egyptians. They were black. You understand? And they were a particular religious or spiritual group that worshipped the God that we know Hebraically, you understand, as Yahweh or Jehovah, according to the Anglicized. This is why when the Beta Israel came out of um, Egypt, we find that there was a mixed multitude. You notice that there was a mixed multitude who also came out. They were not children of Israel. The children of Israel were a part of the family. They would, have, they would be like the Israelitish royal family. But there were others 
that also came out, this mixed multitude. And the mixed multitude means that many of them understood who Ayu or Yahu was as one of the ancient, you understand, one of the, the ancient God or at least one of the old gods, you understand, from the old country, you understand, from Ethiopia. And this is one of the reasons why Moses, you understand, when he married um, Zipporah, his Ethiopian wife, he was instructed by her father. His father-in-law was a high priest. You understand? So this high priest now is instructing Moses, and then in Acts of the Apostles, we find that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, implying both the Egypt that he fled out of, which was the lower Egypt, and the upper, the root of the upper Egypt, which was the Tob, the land of Tob or Tobia, which would be actually beyond Median. You understand? He went through instructions in Median, but even the Jews understand this in some of the Talmud that, that Moses, he um, was a commander of the Ethiopian armies. The Jews even record this to this day in, in, in some of the Talmuds that Moses served in the Ethiopian, he was a commander in the Ethiopian um, um, army. Now, it's interesting that they understand this. They know these things, you understand. But to bring all this together and see that the common denominator is black people. See, the, this is the common denominator with this, is black people, is Africa, is, 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 is Egypt, black Egypt. You understand? It is Ethiopia, it's the root, it's the Bible. It's I and I, even in this present time. So, just to sum this up, we went a little bit further than um, we had probably intended. Oh, by the way, we did say that Moses wasn't a Jew. You hear a lot of so-called converted Jews saying that Moses was a Jew. No, Moses was a Levite. Moses was a Levite. You understand? Jacob was a Hebrew. You understand? And Moses was a Hebrew too, but if we want to talk about nationality or, or, or racially um, speaking, you understand, he was a black Assyrian. His father was a black Assyrian, and their grand, great-grandfather, Abraham, was a Hebrew, you understand, in his religious or spiritual, in his spirituality, He's a Hebrew. It's like saying that person is a, is a Muslim or that person is a Christian or Orthodox or such and such. They, they recognize his, you understand, know they recognize his, his religious affiliation. They knew of him. They heard of him. You know, and they heard of this man that had come out of the East. So much was said on Abraham even in that time. He had fame even in his time. You understand? It's not like they tell you in their um, in most of their movies and in their um, you know in, in a lot of the stuff that they make that Hollywood makes up. It's 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 not like that. You understand? In more ways than one. So um, I hope that this has been helpful and instructive. And um, take this down. We're about to get into uh, another another level of the lesson. So. Uh, Salam la kou alaykumou.